The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Having virtually exhausted the potential that space has to offer the voracious appetite of us Commodore 64 owners, I suppose there was only one way for games to go. Underwater. Terror of the Deep is described quite accurately as an adventure simulation in the depth of Loch Ness. Loch Ness is known as the home of the mythical Loch Ness monster, also known as Nessie. A cryptid, reputedly a large unknown animal, it is similar to other supposed lake monsters in Scotland and elsewhere, though its description varies from one account to the next. However, stranger creatures rise from the water at night and terrorise the locals. Your job is to seek them out and kill them using a peculiar diving bell, inherited from an eccentric old engineer. Using the extraordinary craft, you need to search out and destroy the unworldly monsters. After giving a suitable diving point to the captain of the surface ship, you are lowered into the deep waters of the lock. All you have to go on is the legible parts of an old notebook, which you found on the floor of the bell. Very little was readable, but the entries mentioned spores which attach to the stationary craft and join together, pods which glow before they hatch, the presence of evil crystals, one of which is the source. Further information gleaned from the books warns you not to harm Nessie, the creature mentioned earlier, and a big hint is that you are also informed that the fish in the lock swim away from the crystals. The control panel looks really complicated, but to be fair, it is pretty easy to operate, and I found that keyboard control is probably more preferable, as it offers greater accuracy. As you will see on here, there's a quick overlay of what does what. All 14 of these controls are operated by an animated hand, which adds a bit of interest, I suppose. It may take a little while to remember what does what, but once you've got accustomed, it becomes pretty straightforward. I'll scroll this game inlay across the screen, and if there is anything you'd like to read, you can always pause the video. Apart from the necessary controls for depth and movement, you also have to manually pump air down occasionally and keep cranking the generator to produce power. As you wander through the dark waters and the lock, you can pivot smoothly around to look in every direction. You also have a klaxon, which can be sounded to gain fresh supplies of fuel or spears as the need arises. Two blasts for fuel, one for ammunition but picking them up with the electromagnet can be quite tricky. All very technical, but all very immersive stuff. Bear in mind that while you are trying to accomplish this, the air will run out, the power will run down, and the spores will attack in frightening numbers, so there's plenty to do in the meantime. In order to confront the enemies frequenting the lock, you can fire harpoons or use one of the small supply of bombs. The enemies will also try to attack you by attaching themselves to the outside of the diving bell. In that case, you can switch your view to look out of the window of each of the four sides of the vessel, and, once the leeching enemy is located, send out an electric shock to detach it. At times, it's hard to remember that your main objective is to destroy the alien crystals. But once you get the hang of doing everything else on autopilot, things really start to hot up. Do be careful not to get carried away and start blasting the fish and other harmless marine creatures. I like Terror of the Deep, but terrifying isn't the word I would use to describe it. Quite the contrast to how I felt about it back in 1987, when I'd literally be crapping my pants playing it. In fact, this and Aliens used to scare the bejesus out of me as a kid. Even Friday the 13th didn't scare me that much. Playing this now as an adult, it's actually quite relaxing, if a little hectic at times. The feeling of being submerged in the murky depths of Loch Ness is brilliant and makes a change from dead boring space, which always seems to look the same. Get it fired up on your Commodore 64, it's a very decent game. 
even though I never finished it. I enjoyed the little stories the reporters had standing by for my failure. But either way, I kept coming back for more. Once more, we descend into the dark depths. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and let me know what you thought of this game in the comments section. As always, your support is massively appreciated, so if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, but are enjoying the nostalgia, then maybe consider subscribing and joining me on this epic journey down memory lane. There's plenty more games on the channel playlists, categorised in year of release and also the genre of the game, so hopefully finding your favourites will be getting easier and easier the further we delve into the catalogue of games. If it's not there yet, then you never know, it might be the next video. Hopefully I'll see you all there. Until then, bye for now.